Good day, and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the G3 Apparel Group first quarter fiscal 2024 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during this session, you will need to press star 1 1 on your telephone. You will then hear an automated message advising you your hand is raised. To withdraw your question, please press star 1 1 again. Please be advised that today's conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to your speaker today, Neil Knackman, CFO. Please go ahead. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Before we begin, I would like to remind participants that certain statements made on today's call and in the Q&A session may constitute forward-looking statements within the meaning of the federal securities laws. Forward-looking statements are not guarantees, and actual results may differ materially from those expressed or implied in forward-looking statements. Important factors that could cause actual results of operations or the financial condition of the company to differ are discussed in the documents filed by the company with the SEC. The company undertakes no duty to update any forward-looking statements. In addition, during the call, we will refer to non-GAAP net income, non-GAAP net income per diluted share, and adjusted EBITDA, which are all non-GAAP financial measures. We have provided reconciliations of these non-GAAP financial measures to GAAP measures in our press release, which is also available on our website. I will now turn the call over to our Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Morris Goldfarb. Thank you, Neil, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. We had a good start to the year. In the first quarter, our team worked hard to successfully navigate what remains a challenging environment where we exceeded both our top and bottom line guidance. For the first quarter of fiscal 2024, net sales were $607 million, above our guidance by approximately $45 million. Non-GAAP net income per diluted share was 13 cents, exceeding the midpoint of our guidance by 23 cents. As expected, gross margins were significantly better than last year's first quarter. We made strong progress right-sizing our inventory position by reducing future buys to account for the product that we're carrying. We sequentially decreased inventory from last quarter by $80 million and ended with balances up approximately 15% to last year or up 8% excluding the acquired Karl Lagerfeld inventory. Further, as port congestion and lead times have normalized, we adjusted our warehouse space appropriately. Importantly, we expect this trend to continue throughout the year driven by freight costs moderating and not needing to anniversary significant logistical costs, primarily incurred in last year's third quarter. We ended the quarter in a strong financial position with approximately $800 million in cash and availability, including returning $17 million to our shareholders through stock repurchases. Our balance sheet continues to provide us with the flexibility to invest in future growth. Last quarter, we announced two new substantial opportunities, which include the spring 2024 repositioning and global expansion of Donna Garin and a long-term license for Nautica in North America. We've already begun executing against them. Today, we're pleased to announce a new licensing agreement for the Halston brand as a third new initiative. We've entered into a 25-year agreement with Excel Brands to design and produce all categories of product with the option to buy the brand at the end of the licensing term. As the master licensee for Halston, we have the ability to sub-license additional lifestyle categories that we do not produce providing another share of licensing income. First deliveries are expected for fall of 2024. Halston is an American heritage brand with a rich legacy of glamorous designs across a range of price points. Currently, the brand is sold through a number of distribution channels with a focus on top-tier department stores and live streaming. 
With our best-in-class design and merchandising teams, retail relationship, and, distribu and distribution expertise across stores and digital platforms, we'll make the brand more widely available to consumers across a broad range of touch points. At G3, we're known for our success with American Heritage brands and believe there's tremendous opportunity to grow Halston by leveraging our proven model to unlock its potential. I look forward to sharing updates with you as we make progress on bringing this exciting brand to market. Development for Nautica and Donna Karen is well underway. We've spent time studying the archives of these brands to ensure we create lines with authentic brand messages while broadening their appeal. Product development and merchandising are foundational strengths of our company and our experienced teams are moving quickly. For Nautica, we're hard at work bringing the spring 2024 jeans line to life. Having built highly successful and differentiated jeans businesses for Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, and DKMY, we're confident in our approach to Nautica jeans. With a strong understanding of the architecture of this category, we're creating a line that we believe will be successful from the start. With Donna Karen, we're leveraging the brand's classic, contemporary, and elevated feel and working to broaden its appeal to a wider consumer base. The collection looks incredible, and the initial response from our retailers has been positive. The new Donna Karen, Nautica, and Halston opportunities along with our focus on our strategic priorities, will continue to drive growth for the company. Our strategic priorities remain drive our power brands across categories, further expand our portfolio through ownership of brands and their licensing opportunities, extend our global reach, maximize omni-channel opportunities by leveraging data, and continue to scale our private label business. Now let me update you on some of our progress this quarter. Our power brands, DKNY, Carl Lagerfeld, Calvin Klein, and Tommy Hilfiger outperformed our expectations. Our results were led by dressier categories, including dresses, sportswear, and suit separates. Consumers are responding to our latest product offerings across all of our distribution channels. Our diversified expertise enabled us to, piv to pivot quickly to these categories from athleisure, which has declined in demand. We continue to be able to make quick transitions where necessary to deliver the right product at the right time. Own brands are a key strategic priority for us. This includes a focus on DKMY, Carl Lagerfeld, Donna Karen, and Vilbrican, as well as our other own brands, which continue to perform well and represented an aggregate of $1.3 billion in annual net sales last year. This year, our own brands are expected to generate approximately $1.5 billion in annual net sales. Our team is focused on these businesses through expansion across categories, distribution channels, geographic regions, digital penetration, and new licensing opportunities. These brands have strong resonance and significant potential to grow while generating higher operating margins than the company's historic averages. Our North American DKNY and Carl Lagerfeld Paris businesses exceeded plan and are off to a good start for the year. DKMY has shifted much of its marketing efforts to a digital-first approach, focusing on both performance and brand awareness campaigns. The brand continues to build relationships with influencers across all key social platforms and participated in the second annual Metaverse Fashion Week in March. Last month, Vogue and the Metropolitan Museum of Art hosted the annual Met Gala, the largest and most prestigious event in global fashion. The event celebrated the opening of the museum's new exhibition, 
Karl Lagerfeld, A Line of Beauty, which revisits Karl's extraordinary career at Chanel, Fendi, Chloe, and his own Lagerfeld brand to explore his impact on fashion and culture. It's a great honor for Karl Lagerfeld, and we're thrilled that our brand is central to all of the activities. The Celebrity Studded Gala was widely watched with spectacular red carpet arrivals. Many celebrities wore Karl Lagerfeld, including Academy Award actors Michelle Yeoh and Jared Leto, in addition to Amber Valletta, Cara Delevingne, and Carla Bruni Sarkozy. To capitalize on the significant Met Gala press and activities, we focused on our marketing investments on brand building strategies that connected with customers. We rolled out our largest global marketing campaign for the brand to date, which included dedicated windows at Macy's and Bloomingdale's flagship stores in New York City. We also launched capsule collections, events, media partnerships, pop-ups, and metaverse engagement. These activities resulted in an impressive 5.1 billion impressions. This was global and created increased demand for the brand. Our largest retail partners and our own retail sites saw significant spikes in the period around the Met, uh, the Met Gala. The branding halo from the Met, coupled with a strong performance we've seen as a result, reinforces the power of having Karl Lagerfeld as part of our portfolio. Additionally, we're looking forward to the Karl Lagerfeld movie with Jared Leto, who is starring in and co-producing with us. We expect that these investments will increase long-term brand affinity. Extending our global reach is another key priority. In addition to Karl Lagerfeld and DKMY, Vilbrican continues its positive sales trend and opened three new stores this quarter. The brand is known for exciting collaborations that drive newness, excitement, and differentiated product. Last week, we officially opened the Vilbrican La Plage, our first beach club in Cannes, signaling the brand's association and ability to grow all things vacation. Having just returned from the grand opening, I can tell you that it embodies the spirit of the brand. It is clear that there are many more opportunities to broaden the Vilbrican experience and further solidify our position as a leading luxury resort brand. Our focus on developing sales across multiple distribution channels is yielding good results. In particular, our digital business had strong growth of over 20%, an increase that outperformed the industry overall. This is primarily attributed to our focus on building our Amazon business, which was almost triple last year's first quarter, led by outerwear, dresses, and shoes. Our growth with pure play digital retailers offset traditional digital channels, which as expected, have moderated with customers returning to stores. This diversified mix is serving us well as we continue to invest in expanding our digital distribution channels, including our own sites, retail partner sites, and pure plays, and ensuring that appropriate product is also available in stores. The replatform of our own DKMY and Karl Lagerfeld Paris e-commerce sites are boosted by a new look and feel, new loyalty programs, enhanced CRM capabilities, and upgraded technical operations. These are powerful consumer engagement tools that are resulting in strong increases in traffic, as well as strong double-digit increases in sales and increased average order value. We're unlocking data in more effective ways than ever before to acquire new customers, drive incremental conversion, and foster a more seamless shopping experience for our brands. This work has resulted in the strong performance of our digital business. We continue to take on initiatives to enhance our operations, 
which will further improve our profit margins in the future. This includes hiring a consultant to help us optimize our warehousing infrastructure. Lastly, I'm pleased to mention that, uh, that um, um, we had a good start to the, first, to the new fiscal year. We beat out top and bottom line guidance. We made solid progress aligning our inventory to forward demand, and we signed a new long-term global licensing agreement for Halston. Furthering our, our focus on developing new opportunities, Based on the strong first quarter, we're raising our fiscal 2024 outlook. We now expect fiscal 2024 net sales of approximately $3.29 million, excuse me, $3 billion, slightly up to last year, and including a full year of the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business. We're raising our non-GAAP net income per diluted share to be in the range of $2.80 to $2.90 compared to $2.85 in fiscal 2023. In conclusion, I'm pleased to mention that our board has nominated three new directors, Dr. Joyce Brown, Michael Schaefer, and Andrew Yeager, who will stand for election at our annual shareholder meeting this Thursday. We look forward to having their expertise and valuable perspectives in supporting the future of G3. I'll now pass the call to Neil for a discussion of our first quarter financial results, as well as guidance for the second quarter and full year, full fiscal 2024. Thank you, Morris. With respect to our results of operations, the comments I'm about to make on a non-GAAP basis, and again, a full reconciliation of our GAAP to non-GAAP results are included in our press release issued this morning. Net sales for the first quarter ended April 30, 2023, decreased approximately 12% to $606 million from $689 million in the same period last year and approximately $45 million above our guidance. Included in our sales for this quarter were $60 million in sales of the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business, which became a wholly owned subsidiary on May 31, 2022. Accordingly, the results of the Carl Lagerfeld business were included in our results commencing with the last month of the prior year's second quarter. Net sales of our wholesale segment decreased approximately 14% to $587 million from $681 million last year. This segment now includes the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business results. Net sales of our retail segment were $30 million for the first quarter compared to net sales of $28 million in last year's first quarter. Our gross margin percentage was 41.2% in the first quarter of fiscal 2023, compared to 35.7% in the previous year's first quarter. The wholesale segment gross margin percentage was 39.9%, compared to 34.1% in the prior year's comparable quarter. As we have stated before, the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business operates at a higher gross margin percentage than the rest of our wholesale segment. Their inclusion in the quarter resulted in an increased wholesale gross margin percentages of approximately 250 basis points. The remainder of the increase in gross margins is a result of a decrease in inflationary pressures in product and transit costs, as well as increases in our prices. The gross margin percentage in our retail operation segment was 50.9%, compared to 49.9% in the prior year's quarter, also benefiting from a decrease in inflationary pressures in product and transit costs. Non-GAAP SG&A expenses were $226 million, or 37.3% of net sales, compared to $183 million, or 26.6% of net sales in last year's first quarter. SG&A grew by approximately $43 million, primarily related to the inclusion of the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business in our results for the quarter. In addition, we had an increase in warehousing costs as a result of our higher inventory levels and increases associated with overall inflationary pressures. Non-GAAP net income for the first quarter was $6 million or 13 cents per diluted share compared to $35 million or 72 cents per diluted share 
in last year's first quarter. This was significantly above the midpoint of our guidance of a net loss of $0.10 cents per share. Turning to the balance sheet, we made good progress with respect to our inventory levels, which sequentially decreased by $80 million from last quarter. As compared to last year's first quarter, inventory levels were up approximately 15%. Approximately half of the inventory increase is attributable to the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business. The remaining increase is related to increases in outerwear that we carried into this year and expect to ship in the fall and holiday season. Just as a reminder, we have tempered our buying this year in all categories to account for our existing inventory levels and expect our, level, expect our levels to be down significantly compared to the prior year at the end of the second quarter and continue to normalize our inventories as we go through the third quarter. We ended the quarter in a net debt position of approximately $250 million compared to $83 million in the prior year. This increase in net debt was impacted by the $170 million in net cash used to complete the Carl Lagerfeld acquisition and $44 million used for stock repurchases. We had cash and availability under our revolving credit agreement of approximately $800 million at the close of the quarter. Post quarter end, we repaid $75 million of the $125 million note outstanding to LVMH. The remaining $50 million of this note will be repaid on December 1st. We expect strong positive cash flows this year that will be enhanced as our inventory levels normalize. We believe that our liquidity and financial position provides us the flexibility to invest in our future growth. As for our guidance, a full reconciliation, based on our performance in the first quarter, we are raising our guidance. For the full fiscal year 2024, we now expect net sales of approximately $3.29 billion, slightly ahead of last year. On a non-GAAP basis, we expect net income for the full fiscal year 2024 of between $132 and $137 million, or between $2.80 and $2.90 per diluted share. This compares to non-GAAP net income of $139 million, or $2.85 per diluted share, for fiscal 2023. Full year fiscal 2024 adjusted EBITDA is expected to be between $267 and $272 million compared to adjusted EBITDA of $266 million in fiscal 2023. For the second quarter of fiscal year 2024, we expect net sales of approximately $595 million compared to $605 million in the same period last year. The prior year's second quarter reflected only one month of the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business. On a non-GAAP basis, we expect operating results of between a loss of $3 million and net income of $2 million, or between a loss of $0.06 cents per share and net income of $0.04 cents per diluted share. This compares to non-GAAP net income of $19 million, or $0.39 cents per diluted share in the second quarter of fiscal year 2023. Let me add some context around modeling. As Morris mentioned, we expect gross margin improvement during fiscal year 2024 and anticipate ending the year with gross margins up approximately 350 basis points compared to the fiscal 2023 rate. This is driven by a few factors. First, freight costs have significantly moderated and we expect this benefit throughout the year. Second, we do not expect to repeat significant one-time logistical costs primarily incurred in the third quarter of last year. Lastly, the first five months of this year will benefit from the inclusion of the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business, which positively impacts our gross margin percentages. The results from the acquired Carl Lagerfeld business were reflected commencing June 1, 2022. We anticipate SG&A will delever as we continue to expect elevated warehousing costs associated with higher inventory levels this year as well as continued inflationary pressure on costs. Further, the addition of the Carl Lagerfeld business in the first five months of this year will increase the percentage of net sales represented by SG&A expenses. We expect non-GAAP interest expense to be approximately $50 million, and we are estimating a tax rate of 28% during the year. We have not anticipated any potential share repurchases in our guidance. 
That concludes my comments. I will now turn the call back to Morris for closing remarks. Thank you, Neil. And thank you all for joining us today. G3 continues to successfully navigate what, is, uh, what has remained a challenging operating environment. We're off to a good start in the new fiscal year. We remain focused on driving our key strategic priorities and continuing to develop new opportunities. We have the financial flexibility to invest in our business and take advantage of appropriate opportunities they, that may come our way. I'd like to thank our entire organization, our many partners, and all of our stakeholders for their continued support. Operator, we're now ready to take some questions. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, please press star 1-1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, please press star 1-1 again. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. Our first question comes from Edward Yuruma from Piper Sandler. Your line is open. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for the time. I guess first, Morris on Halston, exciting news. Can you talk a little bit about the white space now that you have a couple of owned brands in that space and licensed brands? Kind of how does it fit in relative to DKNY and Carl Lagerfeld? Uh, and then as a follow-up, Neil, I know you had lots of excess demerged costs in the back half of last year. Kind of are they already rolling off? And can you just maybe remind us for modeling purposes kind of when they were, uh, when they fell in last year and how we should model appropriately this year? Thank you. Thanks for your question, Ed. Um, Halston, for us, um, is, is a brand that we will have full control of and basically um, servicing the demands of where the consumer wants to be. Uh, we're developing a collection of, of uh, a little bit more glamorous than we historically have done product. Uh, we've staffed it with talent that is premier in our organization. We didn't have to go outside uh, to find new talent. Uh, we have talent that uh, follows basically the beat of G3, uh, does it well, sourcing is not a problem, uh, and we're, you know, we're, we're excited about the opportunity of, of building a, a, a global initiative with Halston. It's a brand that um, um, very much is classified as an owned brand, and as much as we'll share some licensing royalty with Excel, uh, they'll, you know, they seem to be great partners, and we've got uh, um, we've got uh, a strong plan for this in, in the coming years. Uh, the the white space that your uh, that your question refers to. In, in product, I assume you're asking, uh, is more existing in our portfolio than um, out there you know, in, in the world. It's a, it's a brand that partners well with Lagerfeld. Uh, in a sense, they're contemporaries. Uh, one has got um, European appeal, and the other is uh, more of a, an American heritage brand that we've proved out uh, to be, you know, quite proficient in developing brands such as as, uh, um, as um, Halston. Uh, we're not so concerned about filling white space, or we're a little bit more concerned about filling our own space. Um, and has, you know, and as, as most of you do know, uh, we're in a process of uh, exiting both Tommy and Calvin. So this is a, a shore up to our assets, um, and as I said before, uh, we're excited by the opportunity and the great partners that we have. Ed, on the logistical costs, uh, we incurred about $40 million in total last year. Uh, about just under $30 million was in the third quarter, uh, and about $10 million was in the fourth quarter. Uh, and you could pretty much uh, exclude those figures uh, almost entirely as we, we roll uh, this year. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. One moment for our next question. We have a question from Will Gardner from Wells Fargo. Your line is open. 
Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, Neil, maybe you could just talk a little bit about inventory levels that, and more as to, I guess, what you're seeing at retail partners. Are, you know, are they still heavy um, with inventory? Um, are they beginning to order? Uh, are, are receipts coming back? Um, and then secondly, maybe can you speak to the work stoppages at the, at the West Coast ports and, and how that might impact your, your business? Thanks. Thank you for your question, Will. Um, uh, the inventories are a major issue for our, our customers today. There's a clear focus on managing their inventory differently than they have historically. Uh, turn on product is a focus, uh, they, which uh, is is a natural. Um, if you're not turning your, your inventory, you, you have no need to buy it. Fortunately for us, uh, we're on the good side of that. Our inventory is turning well. Um, our inventory is in demand. We've, um, uh, our fashion and our inventory is in demand. Um, and uh, what we've done is adjusted uh, our inventory into you know, the, the in-demand categories that uh, we have. Uh, we've, we're in a good position on, on the performance or athleisure side of our business. Uh, we have uh, a fair amount of orders that go forward that uh, support the initiative. Uh, the space is not being given up. Uh, it, there's an overabundance of product in the marketplace. We're adjusting our flows to accommodate that. Um, and the areas that, that are flourishing uh, at retail are uh, our specialty. Uh, suit separates and uh, and dresses um, are areas of of, um, of demand that we dominate. So uh, it's it's not necessarily how the retailer is managing their inventory. It's how we're managing fashion and the right product for our retailers to create demand in our classifications. So we don't see a problem. Our orders support that. Our reorders support that. Um, but there is a focus on on uh, coming in with low inventories by quarter. Um, we have done an amazing job of bringing down our inventory levels uh, to um, you know to at least what you're seeing is Q1, which was not a problem quarter for us last year. Our problems came in uh, Q2 and Q3, uh, in spite of the fact that you're seeing a, an 8% increase uh, in inventory levels. It's at a period of time that uh, our inventory levels were were not an issue at all. Um, you'll see major, major decreases in inventory levels for Q2 and Q3, uh, which will enhance our our, our cash, um, and it'll uh, uh, mitigate some of the uh, logistical issues that we had last year. So inventories are uh, very much in control. As far as the West Coast, we're not incurring any issues, uh, I, not at all. Uh, I've, not, uh, I've not been forewarned that we have a potential issue. Uh, we, we're flowing our inventory appropriately. Uh, we have uh, inventory in-house to support a, a good percentage of what we need going forward. So uh, there's, there's no crisis on our horizon. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank, thank you. We have a question from Mauricio Cernavega from UBS. Your line is open. Great. Good morning, and, and thanks for taking my questions. Uh, I just wanted to ask about, about the Hausman brand agreement. So just following on the previous question, what, what kind of you know, revenue potential do you see in the long term from this brand? And, and also, I, I noticed like in, in another release, uh, press release, was mentioning that there was like a not from payment in May 2023, for, for this an advanced payment uh, is, is that a, like like um, an amount could you share that the the figure for that and how meaningful it is for for your guidance this year and then and then lastly on on the gross margin how should we think about you know the rate of expansion in upcoming quarters compared to what we saw you know in in, in Q1 thank you thank you Mauricio um, 
addressing the 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 Halston question, um, I'm not free to give you the cost of uh, uh, buying or giving an offer a payment to Excel. Um, it's it's not my decision to uh, my uh, my own decision to give it to you. It, it was a minor payment in in the scope of G3. Um, doesn't affect us in any way at all. It gives us freedom. It gives us growth. And if I were to put a target on it, I would tell you within four years, it's a $250 million business. Uh, it is global. It is in demand. We didn't just uh, pick the brand and w without doing our diligence. We have, we have customer support for it. Uh, we globally, quite honestly, uh, I was a little surprised after the fact that um, it has the global appeal, um, uh, particularly in Europe. So uh, we're excited by the opportunity. Um, we we have an added feature. We share uh, licensing royalty and licensing income that comes to us when we license categories that we uh, choose not to do or. Uh, are not able to do for any reason. So uh, besides our own income, uh, we get licensing income. Uh, and uh, it's long-term at a discounted royalty rate, as well as a nominal purchase uh, 25 years from now should we, uh, should we care to purchase the company. Um, it's all done. It's, it's not a major event from a financial output uh, story. As far as gross margin, um, what we've um, what we've told the street and what we're experiencing is, uh, and you can see it, uh, there there's a margin enhancement when you get to ship your own brands without paying a, a serious royalty on it. Um, you know the the royalties all in uh, that we pay for for a product uh, uh, is somewhere between 10 and 12 percent. Uh, eliminating that and um, uh, spending our own money on advertising and, um, and, and maybe a little bit of added infrastructure, um, we still have a, a significant margin enhancement um, uh, in, our, in our business by shipping our own brands versus licensed brands. And Mauricio, just to help you with some of the phasing, we, we expect pretty strong increases compared to the prior year for the second and third quarter. And then, of course, in the fourth quarter, um, that will probably tail off but still be ahead of the prior year. Great. Thank you very much. Congratulations on the results. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you. One moment for our next question. We have a question from Janet Joseph Koplenberg from JJK Research Associates. Your line is open. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations on a good quarter. Um, I got on a little bit late, so forgive me if you answered this, um, but I was wondering with the addition of the Halston brand it, and, and the uh, development of DK and bringing on Nautica, if you now feel that um, the revenues that will eventually diminish from Tommy and Calvin have been recouped. I, I just wondered how that outlook looked. And I know Halston um, will be a licensed brand, and I wondered about the margin profile of that and how it may impact your business next year. Thank you. So, so Janet, uh, uh, the prior question uh, uh, we, we addressed on, on Halston, um, and I'll give it to you again. Um, Thank you. We, I'm sorry for the repeat. No, no, quite all right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, quite all right. I like telling the story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Halston is a great fit for us. It was not uh, a major cash output, uh, output um, and it's, um, it's signed uh, as a global initiative. It's signed as a discounted royalty rate, and it's signed as an opportunity to buy the brand at termination with, uh, of the license, which goes out should we choose to go out. It, it, it's got 
uh, kick out uh, periods, uh, but should we should we have this brand in 25 years? We buy it for we we buy the entire brand for a nominal amount. So great acquisition for us. Um, it fits into our po- portfolio. We know how to produce American heritage brands, and we have um, built-in demand for the brand, and we have built-in space as we wind down our uh, Calvin and Tommy licenses. Uh, And I believe within four years, uh, this is um, a quarter of a billion dollar business for us Uh, with with enhanced margins. Thank you. Um, Could you also talk about the career wear business that seems to be leading your strength and if you look for that to continue through the remainder of the year, or if you think there will be some reversion back to casual. Thank you. So, good question. Uh, career wear is performing very well. Um, we, we dominate that sector uh, at the wholesale level. Our, our business is very good. Our margins are good. Our inventories, if I were to cite an area where we have low, low inventories, it would be the career wear side of our business. Demand was high, sell throughs were very strong, and we see it continuing um, as it always has uh, to the future. As far as the athleisure business, that's not gone away. There was an overabundance of inventory in the marketplace. Everybody uh, during pandemic decided that that was the area to address. They either expanded their offerings uh, initiated new collections or bought uh, bought brands and, and classifications that they thought they could build. So all of a sudden from uh, a, 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 a small business, it became a giant business. So now it's, it's correcting itself. It's an important business um, as, and as the inventory, the old inventory clears out, New offerings are, are given to the consumer. Uh, we're we're just fine. Uh, we we believe that that business does come back, um, and it comes back uh, uh, appropriately. The the woman is not giving up on on uh, athleisure apparel. It's a way of life. So, and I don't see that way of life um, uh, changing at all. Uh, and it's it's pretty much all demographics, and it's pretty much every age. So uh, we've got you know, the two initiatives that you speak about are are both incredibly strong in different ways in in different time frames. Thank, Thank you, you, Janet. Thank you for Thank your question. Thank you. Our next question comes from Paul Kearney with Barclays. Your line is open. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking my question. Um, my first question is on kind of the SG&A cadence through the year. I, I think relative to where we had you and, and consensus was, 2Q looks a little higher than we were thinking. I'm wondering just if there's anything behind um, why SG&A would be higher in 2Q or, or how we should think about it through the year. And then second, as we lap the Carl Lagerfeld acquisition um, in this coming quarter, can you just give us a sense or just remind us the organic underlying growth um, of that business and how we should model that going forward? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Paul, on, uh, as far as SG&A, uh, pretty comparable with the first quarter, a little more advertising spend. So I, did, I, I think maybe the models were a little bit light, but w- if you look compared to what we're doing in the first quarter for our volumes, nothing too unusual there. Um, like I said, we, we'll have challenges for the year in terms of even the core business with respect to warehousing costs and inflationary pressures in general. Um, with respect to the Carl Lagerfeld acquired business, uh, you know, on a comp basis, we see nice double-digit growth in that business. Um, and, and as Mar said in his uh, prepared remarks, just lots of exciting things are happening around that brand that uh, it, it will inure to the benefit in the, both the current year and the future year for that brand. Thank you. Thank you. One moment for our next question. 
We have a question from Noah Zatskin with KeyBank Capital Markets. Your line is open. Hi, thanks for taking my questions. Um, you know, n- now that you've got Nautica um, and Halston signed up, just wondering how you're thinking about additional opportunities moving forward. Um, would, would you look for an owned opportunity versus license? Are you kind of agnostic there? Um, and then second, just hoping you could speak to your level of comfortability with the order book today as it relates to the decision to raise full year guidance. Thanks. Thanks for your question, Noah. Um, we're, we're consistent. Our first choice is to acquire brands. Um, the, uh, the, the features of owning brands are almost self-evident today. Um, you know, the, the risk of losing a license after you've developed it for you know, the years that we have with Calvin and Tommy have taught us a lesson. Um, owning, is, in this case, is better than renting. Um, the the margin enhancements are incredibly important to us, and being able to guide uh, all our our people uh, as to where the brand goes, um, uh, how it's marketed, and uh, the attributes that we care to impose in a in an owned brand are different than our ability to have an influence on licensed brands. So um, we, we, we like, in this case, we like owning better than renting. Um, as far as uh, what we're, uh, are we out there looking for brands, uh, we are. Um, in, the, in the last few months, I've traveled the world to have meetings on opportunities that, that we believe are, are actionable. Um, none has surfaced to a must-buy today, but uh, we, we do have the availability and bank support um, in as much as cost of money is a little richer than I'd like to pay. Um, if the opportunities are there, we have the ability of, of buying a major acquisition. So um, we've, we've not put that to the side um, because we have Nautica, uh, Donna Karen, and uh, and Halston, uh, we're we're still searching for um, an important acquisition. And then, uh, no, with respect to the order book, it is um, it's coming along nicely. Obviously, this time of year, we don't have we have not shown all of the seasons that we'll ship during the year. So, probably about seventy five percent of the year looks like it's pretty well reflected, uh, and we feel it's pretty supportive of the um, of our forecast. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Noah. And our last Thanks. question. Yes, our last question comes in one moment. Let me... Our last question comes from Dana Telsey from Telsey Advisory Group. Your line is open. Hi, good morning, everyone. As you think about Carl Lagerfeld and the significant press that you've had over the past quarter, what did, was there any additional contribution to revenues or margins that you saw as a result of it? And for the balance of the year, is there any additional uptick that we should be expecting from the Carl Lagerfeld brand as you move forward? And then, Morris, just your view on the wholesale channel right now, what you're seeing in terms of promotions, and what the setup looks like for fall and for holiday would be helpful. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Dana. Um, we, we, as, as it relates to Carl, uh, we have a spike in, in business. Our margins were good going in. Um, we've positioned the brand in, uh, in an area where you, know, you, you just can't get too deep into the customer's wallet. Uh, it's an affordable brand. It is not top tier luxury, uh, yet we're you know there there is pricing power left in that brand. Um, we um, we've got great demand. Uh, I, I, I was amazed when I was given a number yesterday that uh, there were 5.1 billion eyeballs on the brand during the Met Gala. So um, it, it's clearly brand building that you don't get the immediate. I can't tell you that 
you know, we had an immediate impact that that was as glorious as 5.1 billion eyeballs, uh, but clearly uh, there are eyeballs that are now paying attention to it. So the future is bright. Uh, the present the present business is very good. Uh, the future is better than uh, the business uh, today. Uh, although the business is at the top tier of what we're doing at G3, um, you know, both uh, internationally as well as domestically. So we're excited by the ownership of the brand. There's so much more to come, whether it's retail, whether it's, uh, whether it's wholesale distribution, whether it's licensing, um, and licensing and classifications that uh, were unexpected. So the calls and the curiosity of where to take this brand are just mind-boggling. So um, we, the, we're, we're more than thrilled to own it all. Um, and as far as wholesale, wholesale is you know going through its uh, difficult periods. Uh, there's uh, there's a, a hate to do this, and everybody says the same thing. Uh, weather has it had its impact for Q1. Um, it was unseasonably cold, so spring inventory didn't move nearly at the rate that uh, you know we all expected it to. Uh, I'm expecting uh, markdowns uh, to uh, to be. I'm not going to say aggressive, but there is a need to mark down product to make room for appropriate season goods, and the retailers are recognizing that. Um, I don't think you're going to see a, 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 a crazy amount of, uh, of uh, um, markdown uh, product. I think everybody for the last six months has been focused on inventory correction, so nobody is really top, top heavy on inventory. So I, I, I think we're I think we're all okay, um, and uh, it takes a little time to course correct with all that's gone on in the world in in the last couple of years, and I think we're on that path. Thank you. Thank you, Dana, and thank you all. Um, and um, speak to you soon. Have a good day. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.